All right. Um, this is for David Brown, and um, he just wants some help on his his uh, stuff here. Now, the first thing I'm going to say right off the bat is that I'm just going to merge this down. Um, the first thing I'd say right off the bat is that it's apparent that you're using photos to paint over, um, which is okay, but the problem is that you're not picking the right photos and you're letting the photos stand where they are. Um, so looking at this, um, the first thing I would do right off the bat is I'm going to look at this as a silhouette. Okay. And as a silhouette, we're just going to try and add um, levels here. And all I'm going to do is, uh, actually, you know what, not a level. We'll just do a brightness contrast. I'm going to use legacy to go into um, the contrast. And we're just going to take some of that brightness down a little bit. And this... Uh, another level here and kind of take away some of that that uh, information but as you can see it just kind of turns into I mean even without all the information in there it kind of turns into um, blobs um, I, I can't really tell what's going on um, I don't get a sense of how the character is actually looking and feeling. And so you need to adjust the silhouettes on these. Um, you know, that's, that's the first thing that I would say right off the bat. And to adjust the silhouettes, uh, some are going to be a little bit easier and some are going to be a little bit harder. Um, the easier ones would be like this guy here. We're just going to take his arm here. and select and transform it and move it up and out just a hair and we're just going to uh, pick this gradient you've got here and I'm just going to create a new layer so all the stuff underneath it So it's pretty close. All right. So, and then the same thing goes for this one here. By simply grabbing this arm here. And by stretching it out a little bit more we get this type of thing, okay? And then I'm gonna just add in my missing section here, like so. So do you see how by separating his arms like that, it turns into a little bit easier to read silhouette? Um, I, I see more of the character, I feel more of the stance, and that's what I need to have happen. Um, same thing kind of goes for this character over here, whereas you've got, you've got this big dark cloak here, and um, the problem with the big dark cloak is it has no sense of, I'm just going to... There we go. Um, it's got no sense of really kind of how that character is formed. Like this is a better idea. Now the thing that I can do is I can I'm just going to do a real quick eraser here. Oops. Uh, let me fix this whole 
gradient thing going on here. There we go. Okay, so now you can see here how much better this one reads here. Um, I've got a, a better sense of what's going on in the in the entire scene here. And it's if I want that cloak in there, if I want something like that in there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab kind of how this cloak is actually attached. And I'm just going to paint like so. And then what I'm going to do is just go to my regular brush here. And if I want that cloak, okay. I can put a little wind on there, and now the silhouette still reads just as well. And those are things that you really want to pay attention to. Now, um, as far as using your photos and things like that, uh, the problem you have is that by using these photos, you're not you're you're you're, you're not keeping it consistent. And so what that means is. If you look at your face, you've got photo real faces, and then when you look down at your knees and, and the painted boots and things like that, you're not understanding the, the viable difference of the painting. Um, and so there's ways that we can kind of, um, kind of work on that a little bit. And I'm going to just fix this silhouette here first. Um, I'm going to actually erase we're going to erase this all out, the shadow, because the shadow is really dark and contrasting, and we don't want that. We want simple, um, and we want the shadows to kind of work well with that, the figure here. And you've just got too much going on as far as that goes. Um, so we're just going to take those out. Um, but you can see this leg here. What I'm going to do with this leg here is I'm going to take this here and we're going to transform that over here like this or even up here like this, all right? And the problem with a walking pose is it's really hard to accomplish. Um, so what we're going to do is take this and transform it and just shrink it down a little bit more. And then we're going to grab the brush and kind of fill in. so and by maybe even bending the leg a little bit more um, giving a little bit more foreshortening in there let me just erase some of this up here so we've got our leg here and it's So, and sometimes, let's see here, just to get this right, I'm going to draw in there. So we've got leg, and this is where this type of thing helps you. Leg, knee, kind of bent down like so, ankle flat. So I need to shorten that. Um, and this is like so. But this one here, and this is where my, my issues is, are going on here. There we go. And 
and sometimes just simply doing the line drawing for me helps a ton because it just gives me the idea of where things are actually going. So So that line drawing really helps kind of set that out. And I want to go in and clean up this here to kind of fill in the idea. And there we go. And then, then we can move this up a little bit more. So that line drawing really helps me out um, because I get to see a little bit more of what's going on. And then I can also use that line drawing to chase and push the, the different parts a little bit more. So I can go in and go in here and add in the, the highlight on the knee like so. And then I'm grabbing this darker tone here and doing it according to like so. And so you can see now that, that that knee is in the right spot, it's going to, the legs are a little bit short, um, but with the knee in the right spot, it, it's giving me that sense of how things are going. Now I can probably lengthen the legs up a little bit. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of information that I can do here. Um, you know, just like so uh, to kind of match that, that uh, scene, but you don't want to have that silhouette as one leg because it just doesn't read well. Um, and then again, if you know, you, like I said, you, you're taking these photo textures here and you're not putting in the idea of photo textures down here. And it, at this level, what I would do is if you're going to try and do photo textures, you probably want to stay away from um, a lot of painting because that's going to kind of give you a, kind of a wrong impression. And so to fix that, what I would tell you to do is get your own photo reference of, you know, that information. And, and that way you have some live action um, and you can kind of adjust things accordingly. Because what's happening is you've got a lot of like divots in here as you start painting down and the, these divots can be easily brushed out with um, just a, a, a nice slow or a nice soft airbrush. Um, and, and that's kind of what you want to do is you want to kind of pull those out like so. And you see how that's smoothing up the, the, uh, the forearm there. And so like so, and it's just it's just a thing about anatomy, you know, the cleaning that up a little bit. And if you want to add a little bit more, you're probably gonna, you know, you can add in like little veins and stuff like that going on, um, and just something like this. And you know, you can add in veins and, and all that stuff, but you want to look at the photo reference. You want to look at how it was originally accomplished. Um, the other aspect of this is. You're not really getting a sense of, uh, of how um, this stuff is, is, is put on the character. And so putting on the character, um, you know, that's another issue is you're not wrapping around like, you know, just make a note here. Um, so you're not wrapping this around like this. Um, instead, you would wrap this around the body and it's going to round out like that. So it's not going to curve up along the thing. It's, it's leather. It's not going to mold around the skin like that. It's, it's hard and, and, and it's going to kind of form around the, the major curves, not the individual curves. Um, and then the same thing about construction here, I'm just going to switch my brush here. The same thing about construction goes here. You've got, you've got, uh, um, You've got this going on here. So you've got, this is your major curve here. 
And the problem is you don't have anything matching here. Now, you're putting this big, uh, heavy, like, uh, looks like a uh, horse uh, seat here. And again, you want to have, you know, the straps to kind of hold it in place. Um, you want to have a strap under the arm. Um, you maybe even want to have a have kind of a, a strap over here to hold it up. And that's going to also identify with your characters as well. Um, so you want to really work from the reference and use softer brushes to get in your details and to find your things. Don't paint over it um, because when you paint over it like this, you're not really giving it any type of, you're losing all the texture, you're losing all that information. Okay, and so you, you one, just need to work on your painting style a little bit more. Um, you know, try and get that photorealism and if you can't do that, use the photos to kind of push that in there. All right. I hope that helps.